Welcome everyone. It's just after seven o'clock, so we're going to get started. Hello, Darren and Antoinette. Thank you so much for joining us. I'm excited to have you tonight. Thank you. Thank you for having us. This is awesome. Awesome. Thank you. So we're going to get started. It's just after seven o'clock. Um, before I get into any of the official um, comments and session, I just want to let everyone know that the session is being recorded. If for any reason you don't want to be on camera, that's okay. Just keep your camera off. Okay. So welcome to DCCBA's Ask Our Expert series. For those of you who don't know me, my name is Alethea O'Hara Stevenson, president and founder of the Dufferin County Canadian Black Association. I am honored to have some of our um, board members with us tonight, Stella and Tazanik, and of course, some very special guests, um, Josh and Erin um, joining us tonight or amazing speakers, Darren and Antoinette, as well as Paula, and I will read their bios because their bios are absolutely incredible, especially with the number of years of experience that they have. So um, I'll get to that in a moment. Um, as we proceed through uh, tonight's presentations, um, this is exciting. This is the first time that we have two presentations um, in one night. So, um, pretty special and uh, big moment. But as we go through tonight's presentation, uh, if you have any questions, feel free to drop them in the chat and uh, we'll pause and take them up. I do expect a few more individuals to join us at a um, later time, but for, if for any reason we don't get to all of the questions tonight, we will make sure that we capture them and send them out by email to all of our participants. Okay, awesome. So, our first bio is for Paula Conliffe Lane. Paula Conniff Lane has proudly represented Arbor Memorial since 2018 as a licensed cemetery and funeral pre-planner. She is a skilled and committed, she is skilled and committed to providing her families with a five-star service. She has earned the trust of her client families by educating and empowering them to make decisions for the future. In her free time, Paula is a lector at St. Jerome's Roman Catholic Church and Guardian Angels Parish. She also serves as a parish representative and parent council member at St. Martin's Secondary School. She's a devoted mother of two beautiful children. Welcome and thank you for joining us, Paula. Darren and Antoinette Stevenson. Oh my gosh, the same last name. <laughs> This is amazing. So Darren and Antoinette Stevenson have 20 years of experience in the financial industry, helping families and individuals, not just in implementing customized solutions, but they also specialize in educating their clients on exactly how the financial products they may currently have in place actually work. You may be surprised to learn that their primary service is not a product, rather it's actually their approach and delivery of financial literacy. From sitting with a single parent, married couples, or public speaking to large crowds with one of their acclaimed, with one of their acclaimed It's Your Money seminars, in one way or another, you and your financial outlook will be enlightened. For DNA, net worth increase is not just a phrase they often use. It's the goal for every single family they work with. And this is absolutely perfect and timely, a perfect package for tonight's session. So welcome to each and every one of you. And thank you for saying yes to educating and empowering our community, especially right here in Dufferin County. Thank you. So we're gonna kick off tonight's um, presentation with um, Paula. And so Paula, I believe you have access to share. Yes, could I just share my screen? Let me see. Okay. So welcome everyone. And thank you so much for the introduction and a warm welcome out here. I am here representing Abel Memorial. I am a licensed cemetery and funeral pre-planner since 2018, and I'm honored to be able to educate and empower our community to plan today for tomorrow. I'm excited to join you this evening to speak about a topic that I'm very passionate about, the benefits of pre-planning cemetery and funeral arrangements. Again, <clears throat> Thanks again to the Dufferin County Canadian Black Association for putting together this valuable information session and to each of you for taking the time to be here.
To begin, I'd like to tell you about the company that I'm proud to represent. Arba Memorial is the largest funeral and cemetery provider in Canada, with location coast to coast. Arba Memorial has been Canadian owned and operated since 1947 and includes 41 cemetery, 28 crematoria, and 92 funeral homes. The benefit of our coast to coast service is that we have the peace of mind, knowing that if you move, your plans move with you. When advanced planning with our company, you and your family have access to our exclusive family security benefit, including our national deed exchange program, alternate selection privilege, our protection agreement, and our child and grandchild protection. By choosing an Arbor Memorial location, you have the confidence in knowing all of our directors, including myself, are fully licensed by our governing board, the Bereavement Authority of Ontario, as cemetery and funeral pre-planners. I know that we are all from different parts of the city, but I'd love to show you some photos of our location closest to me, as it's a great example of what our properties and facilities have to offer. Here in my local community, we have three locations that you may be familiar with. The Scott Funeral Home, Brampton Chapel, is a long-standing part of Brampton's heritage. It's located on Main Street, south of Vauden. We are very excited to be celebrating 57 years and are honored to have served the community since 1965. Now that I've shared a little about who we are, let's talk about what you need to know. Are you aware there are more than 87 decisions, choices, and things to do when a death has occurred? I'm sure we can all agree. This is pretty overwhelming. The reality is too often families are sitting in front of us without any arrangements. They're exhausted, distraught, and completely overwhelmed. They have no idea the time, the decisions, and expenses they will immediately endure. As difficult as this all sounds, it's important to know there's a better way, and that better way is why we are here today, to show you the simple benefits of pre-planning cemetery and funeral arrangement for yourself and those you love. A few of these 87 decisions and choices and things to do that family most commonly stumble over are vital st statistics, mother's maiden name, father's name, their places of birth, flower, music and donation selections, clothing for your loved ones, cancellation of vital government documents. Imagine being able to turn all these difficult decisions into one simple phone call. You may ask, why pre-plan? Let me take you through the top few advantages. One, by pre-planning, you ensure your family will be spared the burden of making all these decisions on unfamiliar matters at the most difficult times of their life. Two, by setting plans in place, you avoid your family second guessing what you would have wanted. Three, on an average, prices increase by 10% per year. Yes, 10% per year. By pre-planning today, you lock in your costs and avoid unnecessary inflation and extra expense. We have affordable payment plans to suit any budget. Automatic credit approval. By planning ahead with a clear mind, you can make choices that are suitable to your budget and preferences. 
When you plan today for tomorrow, we believe that your confidence and convenience should begin from our first interaction. We have established a simple four-step guidance program to best serve our families and provide them with the best possible solutions. Number one is to consider your needs. At, at ABBA, step one is establishing your specific needs and when, where you stand in your knowledge of final arrangements. Whether you already started plans or you never given it any thought, you need the facts to help you navigate the process. We take the time up front to learn about you, to consider and discuss your situation and wishes. What makes us different is our understanding of what makes you unique. Number two is to compile your information. Planning can be overwhelming and emotional. So we offer you a free four-piece estate planning kit to assist in gathering the paperwork ahead of time. You can easily detail the whereabouts of important documents, record personal wishes, and compile lists of important numbers and contacts, creating a single essential resource for your executor or family members at the time of death. For many of us, particularly as parents and grandparents, we worry about the effect our passing will have on our loved ones. Just like your plan that just like you plan for retirement or revisit your will. Pre-planning final arrangements is an important yet often overlooked way to ensure you take care of your family. We are dedicated to sharing the information you need so that you have true peace of mind. Knowing your final wishes will be met and your loved ones won't need to worry about difficult decisions or final commitments in their grief of in their time of grief. That's why we are offering you an established an estate planning kit completely free of charge. We, we also offer on-site receptions. One of our most valuable tools is the official family registry. It acts as a vital place to list all your personal wishes, information that will be immediately needed at the time of a passing. Often these details are unknown or forgotten at the time of an emotional loss. That's why we feel that no one should be without it. It also includes other important topics such as memorable events, organization affiliations, Eulogy, eulogy and obituary notes, important medical records, insurances, benefit claim opportunities, and so much more. A part of my service is to provide you a copy of the registry and to sit with you, walk you through it, and show you how to use it. By understanding all the facts, you can confidently make decisions to protect your family and finances. Number three is to create your unique plan. Once your needs have been determined and the documents gathered, we can help you and your loved ones gain a better understanding of the many traditional and contemporary options available to reflect your taste, culture, and budget. Whether you begin the process with funeral or cemetery, consider burial or cremation, we guide you in selecting the plan that is right for you. A place of reflection for you and for generations to come. Cemeteries providing lasted memorials and permanent tributes to your loved ones. They are also beautifully maintained and protected green space that invite families and friends to find solace and comfort to reminisce and reflect, 
and even to reconnect with family traditions and heritage. Every arbor location is as distinct as the community that surrounds it. Our gardens are no exceptions, with each one reflecting the needs and wishes of different burial and memorial customs. We offer traditional burial sections, many with upright granite monuments or flat bronze marker. In addition to a collection of unique cremation options. Explore the many ways to personalize the service. This is really a chance for us to heal and a way to say goodbye. When we recall a loved one, we focus on the interests and passions that make them unique. A funeral service is your chance to revisit these special qualities and relive joyous moments while saying goodbye. For many, a meaningful service is an important part of the healing process. It also helps console the immediate family, the people who often feel the loss most deeply. Every service should be as unique as the life being celebrated. Today, there are many ways to personalize this important event. With your faith, culture, and family traditions, it's only the start. You may also decide to have the service included, like live, included live or recorded music, photos and videos, or favorite readings, and even cherished mementos. We, we strive to be flexible in accommodating every reasonable request and help guide you through your choices. Muse, for instance, in the chat here, you can write down some, whether it be a hobby, whether it be um, a sport or something that you interested in so that we can create a personalized event for you. So for instance, for me, I do not want anyone mourn for me. I am a joyous person. I want someone to be able to celebrate my life, celebrate it. It's like a celebration of life. So I would have no, nobody wearing black at my final arrangements. I want everyone wearing red. It will be a celebration for me. I want people partying. I want people dancing. I want music all around me. I don't want nobody mourning. Things like, I love the Caribbean, my type of food. So cuisine is like provision and saltfish or macaroni pie and fried chicken. Those are the things that I like, right? So this is what I would want for my final arrangement. For instance, like if you have like a traveler, like if you, if you're, you like traveling, for the lover of adventure, you can do something like celebrate your loved ones, curiosity about the world, their devotion to discovery with a special tribute to their road well travel. Send off, like create the perfect atmosphere with display of globes, maps, travels, posters, vacation photos or videos. Complete the scene with authentic music from favorite destinations. Or for cuisine, you can choose maybe an exotic theme that celebrates your loved one's favorite ethnic cuisine. Memento is like a personalized luggage tag or a small photo album with a travel pic inside. These are perfect as a special keepsake for guests. So if the four, the complete, the final details, the final stage in your arrangement process is to identify the value of your investment and to create a financing structure that comfortably suits your lifestyle and budget with ample time to discuss best payment schedules and options with families. Once plans are finalized for funeral or cemetery, we meet with you to ensure the plans continue to meet your needs and to begin the four step process for the other half of your arrangements. The fact is someday everyone will have to face the problem of making the final arrangements. It's easier, kinder, 
and more economical to do it today together. When talking about planning cemetery and funeral arrangements, it's important you never feel alone. More than 1 million Canadian families have already planned with ABBA Memorial. Before we move into questions, thank you for your time and attention this afternoon. As I mentioned earlier, my responsibility is to empower each and every one of you to make these difficult decisions in advance. Again, it's in advance. I hope that you all reach out to me following this seminar to secure your copy of our official family registry, along with our many other planning tools. As a small token of my appreciation, I have a little giveaway. If you can add your name and phone number to the chat window below, we have a few prizes up for grabs. I'll do the draw, follow up with you right after the presentation and arrange delivery of your price. Let's open the floor for questions. Thank you. That's fantastic, thank you. Um, let me take, can you take off the um, screen share so we can see um, who's in the chat? I know we have a few questions already pre-submitted, but I'm gonna save some for the very end after um, Darren and um, Antoinette's uh, presentation, because I have a feeling that um, they will answer those questions. But um, I believe Stella, you had a, a question that you wanted to ask? I think you had two. I was speaking on mute, oh, <laughs> sorry. <no more. laughs> I have a couple of questions, but I don't know if there's time. It's an interesting topic. And uh, my first question is, if, you, uh, if your wishes are already outlined in your, um, uh, in your will, do you still need pre-planning? Did you get that? Great question. If your wishes were already outlined in your will, do you still need the pre-planning? Yes, a will is an important legal document, right? Um, but often isn't read until after the funeral, right? So our pre-arranged plan offers security to you and your family that the money to cover your final expense will be immediately be available when it is needed. Let's see. Powerful, thank you. Thank you. You have another one, Stella? You said you had a couple? Oh, yes. <laughs> <laughs> this is great, thank you. Yeah, I have, um, let's say I have a life insurance. Does it uh, cover funeral expenses? Yes, for, for many families, life insurance is purchased to help loved ones continue their lifestyle in the future, or maybe even get ahead as with all things. Funeral and cemetery costs are steadily on the rise. Therefore, there is a risk that much of that insurance money will be needed to pay for final expenses that could be more affordably taken care of now through pre-arrangement. Perfect, thank you. Thank you. Are there any I'll ask my last one at the end. Let me okay, give this. <laughs> okay, no worries. Um, if there are no other questions, questions. I'm going to invite Darren and Antoinette to touch on your money, money talks. So Darren, can you come front and center to the stage, please? Yes, we can. Thank you. Awesome. Thank you. Good evening, everybody. Uh, Paula, that was fantastic. As usual, great uh, presentation and so informative. I think it's such a important topic to have. Um, thank you so much for having us here this evening, Alethea. Not just thank you for bringing us on, but really, for everything I'm seeing that DCCBA does, I think it's so very, very important. And I'm here with my wife, Antoinette, and two kids running around causing too much noise. So she'll be <laughs> right back. But I will say, um, this is one of the best meetings ever already. Because when I look at the attendees, I already see two other Stevensons. So <laughs> that is, I mean, no relation as far as I know. We might have to do like a was that ancestry.com type of thing and see how far this goes back. Think, yeah. but, um, that's amazing. Okay. Um, we're just going to take a little bit of time here. Um, and here's my wife, Antoinette. And we're going to kind of go through just a few things 
in terms of um, helping people to understand your money. You know, many times we call these uh, when we when we have the privilege of doing speaking engagements, we, we title them. It's your money because I want you to think I want everyone to think as we start here, whatever you do in your, your profession uh, or job, you learned about it. You had to go through some sort of training and you do that to be able to operate and generate income to make money whether you're a doctor in medical school or a dentist or a mechanic or a factory job, it doesn't matter. You have to learn about it to be able to make money. The common thing that's missing though is what do we do with our money? Okay, most people don't tend to know how money works. When we get that, I want you to think about when you got your very first ever paycheck, there was not an instruction manual behind it to know what to do with it, okay? So we're gonna go into a couple of areas here. Two areas of focus I want everyone to think of is one, it's your money. You need to know all about it. And I'm going to share my screen as I bring up the other one here. Um, and that's in terms of your net worth. Now, as I'm doing this, whenever we speak of net worth, it's a term that a lot of people know about. However, they, they disassociate with it. Oh, net worth is maybe for, for the wealthy or let me go back here. Or that doesn't, that doesn't have anything to do with me. That's not true. If you do not determine your net worth when you're alive, believe me, the government will determine when you're gone. And that's not something that you want. Your net worth is a simple calculation. It's your assets minus your liabilities. That leaves you with the worth of your family. That's what you leave behind. Or another way to look at it is, if you sold everything you owned and paid off all your debt, what would you be left with? Okay. And one more thing I wanna add here. If you're working with anybody, Anyone in a financial situation, taking advice from anybody, someone at the bank, an advisor, anything. If your net worth is not increasing, then you're just paying for products. You, you, that's not how this works. You are supposed to find value in your financial programs. Your net worth should be increasing. And that's why Amsent and I are so passionate about that. So we're going to talk about three things that you want to make sure are in order with your financial planning. And the first one is you gotta have savings and investments. And we're gonna highlight the difference between the two of them. So the first thing you need to understand is, you know, this is statistically speaking now, for most people when that retirement time comes, they are not okay. You've probably heard of the wealthy 1% before, okay? And that's that's in many places in, in, in um, high populace around the world, such as North America, right? Most people do not have a financial education or a financial game plan. I'm not talking everybody. I'm talking most people, right? It says 95% that fail. And here's the reality. When we get to retirement, we're finding that the life, the life expectancy is pretty long. Time being alive without working is, become, is increasing, yeah. right? It used to be 17 years. Now on average, people are living 27 years after retirement. So what we're finding is not only do you have to save to save and invest to retirement, but you also have to do that through retirement so that your money lasts you so you don't have to end up back in the workforce or doing things you don't want to do. This is how things used to be. Traditionally, there was three way, three things you were looking at when you were going to retire. You were thinking that the government benefits are going to kick in. So that's a lot, often why people thought of 65 to retire. You're going to have your company pension kick in because you're contributing to that every paycheck. And also, you're expecting that you're going to have some savings that you can pull from to have a, a full retirement. But what's happening? Well, government benefits and now even company pensions are seen as supplements to your personal savings. You've got to have investing and saving going on to fund your retirement because we see the reality is government benefits, that government supplement is not enough to fund a full, exciting, endeavoring retirement. Right? You've got to have some things going. And a lot of companies, we're see, as we work with clients day to day, we just had someone call us and say their company is actually stopping the pension plan. Right, So things are changing in the workplace and having control of your financial planning, having control of your saving and investing is going to be all the better, better for you. Now, here's the thing. Uh, most people know if you come across somebody in retirement that's just living on CPP and maybe old age, most people know it's not enough. And they'll say, well, you know, everything is getting more and more. And we tend to nod our heads and just do this. But why? Now, if I say the word inflation, again, most of us know what that means. You know, everything is going up in cost. And generally speaking, incomes do not go up with inflation. And neither do a lot of the benefits you see on the screen. But if we put it into actual terms, inflation is reducing our purchasing power. 
you can see, I mean, you remember, you used to be able to go to the grocery store and you would need a cart if you had $100. Now, if you go to the grocery store with $100, it's a bag or two. Isn't that right? That's inflation, right? We, you know, we're seeing it at the gas pumps. The cost of living is going up. Here's some fun examples. In 1974, this was a McDonald's menu. Now, I know every, no one eats at McDonald's, right? Everyone says, I don't eat at McDonald's, but we all know this menu, okay? A Big Mac used to be 65 cents, okay? Hot chocolate was 15 cents. This is the way we, this is, this is the food we take in. So groceries and fast food, you know, KFC, uh, snack box was two pieces of chicken. So Toonie Tuesday used to be 85 cents Tuesday, okay? Look how much it's gone up to now. It's not even $2 anymore. Right. If we look at housing, downtown Toronto, a condo, fifty thousand dollars. Do not call that number. I've tried. This offer is no longer out there. Okay. I tried. Okay. But fifty thousand dollars. If we look in the suburbs, Scarborough, when it was spelled that way, right? Four bedrooms, three bathrooms, twenty six thousand dollars, twenty seven, thirty thousand dollars. But look at the interest rate. It's not too long ago. We can remember where interest rates used to be. Okay. This is all inflation. What about transportation? You know how much a metro pass has gone up to? We talked about gas. What about the vehicles, right? In the uh, Back in the day, you could get, a, okay, maybe this was not the vehicle of choice, but it was still a brand new car for under $5,000, okay? Back in Malvern, where I actually grew up, okay? But that is how inflation works. And in reality, if we put this in actual terms, we can talk about all the statistics, ladies and gentlemen. We can talk about all the numbers. But what does your eye test tell you? When you go to the Walmart, are you not seeing a gentleman or, or, or a lady like this or at the Tim Hortons or at the McDonald's? If you look on the right of your screen, this was a neighborhood we used to live in in Vaughan. This came to our door. This is We actually scanned this. I remember when the paper route used to be the first job for someone who was maybe, I don't know, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17 years old. But look at that. Seniors and retirees, there was a time where that would be a laughable option. Now, unfortunately, it's a viable option. Don't get us wrong. There are some people who want to work in the later years of their life. They want something to do. This is, these statistics is not referring to that. As Antoinette said, this is for people that retire and realize, I don't have enough, and I need to find a way to make ends meet, right? So you definitely want to be proactive before you reach retirement to get yourself set up so that you can enjoy your retirement to the fullest. And so there's three types of accounts you wanna emphasize as, a, as something to make sure you're addressing and you're planning. You definitely wanna have an emergency fund, right? If something happens, comes up, you don't wanna to have to run to your credit card or run to the long-term savings that you set up. Secondly, you need like short-term savings, right? That might be that maybe you're planning to buy a house in the next couple of years. Maybe you have some children you have to send to school in the next couple of years. Uh, a vacation, a wedding, you know, some things that you're gonna need that money sooner rather than later, right? And then what you need is long-term savings, uh, long-term investments. And again, there's a difference between saving and investing. Investing, you're gonna put it to get interest that's gonna compound, meaning it's gonna double and double and double. Right, so there's different vehicles to utilize to maximize the long-term investing and also even the short-term savings. So long-term, like your RSPs, um, even tax-free savings accounts can also be used for long-term as well as in the short-term savings category. Remember, do not be fooled because it says tax-free savings account. Jim Flaherty, the finance minister said before he unfortunately passed, we named it wrong. We should have never called it tax-free savings account because it can definitely be utilized as a tax-free investment account many in many places you go there's a lot of misinformation out there and they are putting viable tax-free investment plans into savings there is a difference and you need to know that difference make sure number two you gotta have life insurance planning so just very quickly okay the problem the importance of life insurance how much is your car worth i want you to think about that how much is your house worth do you not insure them both well, I think a viable question would be is how much is your life worth? It says probably, but we know for sure a lot more than your car and house. Can you afford not to insure your life? Always remember, insurance is not for you. It's from you. Okay, this is how you leave and take care of your family. And if you don't have a high enough net worth, you can buy that net worth while you're working on it. You see, the options without it are not good. GoFundMe is not life insurance. And I know Paula did some great examples of talking about music and the culinary. And she talked about the acting selfish and the provisions. I love all of that. 
but you got to pay for that up front, right, Paula? Right? You don't want you don't want Budweiser or Heineken coming in to sponsor <laughs> your 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 funeral. Okay, that's not the ideal plan here. Now, here's an actual example. You see this on the news, especially in our communities. This is what happens. One of them leaves, and the first thing we think about is the life, which is the most important thing. But we always think about maybe the house going and so forth. And this is not to contradict that. We cannot replace the person. But I want you to think about the style of living, the expenses. We can't replace the life, but what if we replace the income? You see, insurance is not supposed to be a product. It's a plan. It's a plan for your financial independence. What we're looking at here is insurance isn't for if you die. It's actually for if you die too soon. Before you have the plans like Paula's talking about in place and your net worth set up properly, okay? Because this happens every day. And I, I wouldn't go too far to say, what if this young child is excelling in the community that she's in, in the schooling that she's in? And what if because the income is no longer there, they have to move? And what if that affects this child's upbringing? That's not far-fetched, ladies and gentlemen. That happens every day, right? So we can't replace the person. We can at least try to supplement that income, if not replace it. And make sure, number three, that you have a will and a state plan. This comes into play after working so hard in your life. You want to make sure that everything that you've you set up continues on, that you can leave generational wealth, that you can leave a legacy. And I think Paula covered some really great, valuable information to kind of show you how to make sure that that transitions effectively. So I know Stella asked some great questions as well in terms of how this all works together, your will, your estate planning, your funeral plan, your life insurance. Again, these are decisions that ideally should be made up front so they can work together. Okay. I mean, you can have your, your beneficiaries for insurance. You can have in your will that the beneficiaries for those insurance are supposed to take care of the estate planning. You can have um, some of the services Paula mentioned in your will. So from that insurance, we've already pre-planned our funeral. Take that money and do something else, as Paula also alluded to. Okay. And just remember, when you don't have these things in place, clearly and properly done, that's when the cousin from back home shows up or the nephew or, or some people in your family you've never even heard of before to contest the estate. And the average time on contesting a state is six to seven years of frozen assets. Okay. It can be. So just be very mindful as well to make sure that all these things can work together. Do make sure that in this, like Darren highlighted, you put your beneficiaries on everything, right? Don't, in terms of estate planning, don't just leave it to the estate leave it to a beneficiary. So on all of your investments, make sure, double check, because sometimes maybe people have passed on and you have them as a beneficiary. Maybe you're not in touch with that person anymore and you don't want to leave that stuff to them. So go through and assess your plans. Make sure you're in the know. What do I have? Where do I have it? Is it doing the best thing it can do for myself and for my family that I'm leaving behind? And revisit. Don't set something up and forget about it. Re set yourself up on a schedule where you're revisiting your financial program, you know, every year, every two years, you know, don't, don't just leave it to the wayside. Excellent. And we just want to thank you so much for your attention and your time and the opportunity we've had to come here and share just a small snip snippet of, of uh, some of the things that we like to delve into. And we always lead with financial literacy first so that we can understand how these things work and how they can be a benefit to your, to our families, all of our families. Thank you so much. I'm going to pass it back to our amazing host, Alethea. Awesome. Thank you so much, Darren and Antoinette. This was absolutely amazing. Um, I do have one quick question that I'm hoping you can answer before I turn it over to the audience. The difference between a beneficiary and a trustee. Great question. So let's say you set up some life insurance. You're going to leave a beneficiary. Um, someone who's going to receive that payout. If you have people, ch children, for example, they're under the under age, age of 18, then you have to set up a trustee in addition to take, to take control of that money because they're considered a minor. So technically, they cannot receive it. You need a trustee who's over the age of maturity, maturity to, to receive that money and administer it until they're age appropriate. And you can actually designate that in a will, for example, let them get the money at 18, 20% of it, 20, 25, you can structure it out how they receive it because you don't want an 18 year old to maybe get a million dollars and they're not ready to handle it. That's right. Okay. 
And so in terms of having a well, and then you have your beneficiary and our trustee listed on your insurance policy, I guess the will will automatically override whatever you have on that insurance documents? Or how does that work? What's the difference? Not necessarily. So from an insurance company standpoint, if a person was to pass away, that insurance company is going to send that check to the listed beneficiary. This is why it's very important to have you know, your wishes in writing up front. Because for example, a person could say, I am covered for 350,000 of coverage on my life insurance. I've left that money to this person. Here's what I would like done with that money. That should be in writing so they don't conflict because the insurance company will pay out the check to the beneficiary unless it goes to the estate, like the assets are frozen if that beneficiary perhaps is not around if they've passed on as well. Again, now you have someone else controlling the distribution of those assets, which, which ideally you're probably not gonna want to be the case. Awesome, thank you. You're welcome. I'm just gonna go back to the chat. I believe Dorette asked a question earlier. Um, at this point, she's not sure where she will retire. Um, sorry. Uh, at this point, I'm unsure where my place of residence will be at the time of death. Can we purchase a plot but not select the place as yet? That's for Paula. That's the answer. What is that? <laughs> I can see one second here. Sorry. She did, she's not sure. Hi, Dorit. Okay. So land prices vary. Land prices vary based on the city that you live in, right? It's similar to the to the housing market. You would purchase arrangement closest to where you live, and then it can be um, transferred to our other locations via our transfer benefit. You know, realize early on I talk about different benefits that we have, the transfer privilege, the child-grandchild uh, protection plan, those benefits. So you can still purchase where you live. And even if you move after five years or so, you can come back in and, and you can transfer it to whichever location is closest to you. Thank Perfect. you. That was a great question. I'm going to piggyback off that question because I think it applies, especially in particular to our community, um, where our seniors, you know, whether it's our parents, grandparents, they pass on, but they want to go back home to be buried as their final resting place. Do you help with providing support for those kind of arrangements as well? Yes, we do. We also provide that type of arrangement. Um, the only thing that we wouldn't be able to do is uh, determine the price of, of a plane ticket, right? Mm -hmm. But everything else is, is set in place, right? So that the, your uh, loved ones would be able to go to their resting place, where, whether it be Jamaica, whether it be Grenada, Trinidad, wherever. Okay. Fabulous. Thank you. Um, I think you touched on this again, Paula. Are there payment plans available? And I think you did say yes. Yes, there are payment plans and we will work with you to ensure your plans meet your financial needs. And that is key. You know, I always meet with my families and I tell them every family needs a different, right? Um, your need might be you can pay off, um, you can pay for your arrangements in, in entirety right? Other person might be able to take advantage of our payment plans, which are available for up to four years. Wow. Okay. Um, I'm going to ask another question, but I see Steve has his hand raised. Steve? Is it Antoinette? Uh, thank you so much for your presentation this evening. Paula, because I know her personally, uh, I just want to share this with uh, those that are there. Uh, I met Paula many years ago in Brampton. I was walking in the mall and she was there and she presented me some information and I wasn't interested at the time. Uh, who wants to talk about uh, financial uh, funeral arrangements and, and, and death planning? Uh, it was, certainly wasn't in the cards and I didn't go to the mall for that, but there she was very friendly, polite, getting me to think about these things because they're important. 
And because she realized it was important, she kept my information over those years and then followed up with me again. And even when she followed up with me many years later, I still wasn't particularly interested, but she planted the seed. And I thought to myself, you know what? If I'm going to be a responsible parent, these are the kinds of things that I need to be looking at instead of leaving my children in disarray. Uh, we often see uh, situations where somebody passes, you have people who are squabbling and fighting, people don't know where the funds are coming from. And so when I eventually sat down with Paula and she did her presentation, I thought to myself, you know what? We have to do this. Not only did I make the decision for myself, then I involved my brother as Paula knows and we both went down to her office and we signed up and we got our plots. And I just wanted to say to her today that I thank you so much for staying um, committed to my well-being, if I may put it that way, and getting me to see what I needed to see for the benefit, not only for me, but certainly my family. So this is very important information. And I hope that everybody, if they haven't uh, taken the steps to, uh, to uh, take these measures, that I encourage them to do that because life is unpredictable. Um, and we just want to make sure that we are responsible for those that we care about by taking these steps. So thank you very much, uh, all of you, for the information that you presented this evening. Thank you, Steve. Yes. Than that. Yeah. Exactly. And, you know, if you haven't already done your pre-planning and, you know, even looking at your will, I think this is, again, timely, you know, make sure that you have, have your hearts in order, right? It's critical, especially if you want to be that responsible parent. So I have lots of work I need to do and I'll continue to um, share the message with those around me to make sure that we do our part as well. Um, I do have another question for you. I came prepared tonight, Paula. Look at this. <laughs> <laughs> um, how is uh, my money protected if we decide to invest um, or you know, start our pre-planning process? Well, legislation requires funeral and uh, cemetery companies to put monies received on an account of a pre-arrangement into a trust account. And these trust monies can only be taken out of trust to pay for the delivery of the pre-arranged product or service. Trust monies we receive are held by financial institutions that have Canada Deposit Insurance Corporation, Depositors Insurance. Okay, perfect, thank you. Um, Darren and um, Antoinette, how do you determine the amount of life insurance that you need and how do you determine what the best product is? And maybe that's not a question that you can answer in a broad, broad um, basis, but. That's such a great question. Um, we are big proponents of this. You definitely need to know how much life insurance you need. Um, a lot of people are refinancing. Um, we talked about inflation and rising costs. Everything is going up, but many people do not adjust their life insurance. Therefore, oftentimes we will come across somebody who maybe has an $800,000 mortgage and that's just the mortgage. They might have other debts and funeral needs and so forth. And they're covered for 350,000 of insurance, just for example. So we do have diagnostic tools and all their calculations to go through and look at what is the need for life insurance? What are the liabilities that would come up in the event of your untimely or timely passing. Alethea, you may be surprised to know that on the flip side of this, this can also justify why you may not need life insurance. So if we use a diagnostic tool, if we do an assessment, and let's suppose your house is almost paid off. Um, here, I'll give you a real life example. We I, There's a few clients in this situation, but I can remember uh, somebody we had given a policy to it was a 10 year game plan within that 10 years, we had put some programs in place. They finished paying off their mortgage and we helped them to invest along the time. Upon another visit, mortgage was paid off, no dependent children, enough money to live on and enough money to leave back. The client was shocked that we said, you can cancel your life insurance. You do not require it. You are self-insured. Why continue to pay for a $500,000 policy if you have $500,000? Wow, that is insane. I can't even imagine, but that makes perfect sense, right? Wow, thank you for sharing that. Um, are there any other questions um, from the audience before I ask my final question? I have a quick question for Darren and, and Antoinette. Um, my mom 
signed up for our policy many years ago. And this is, speaks to the importance of uh, getting a full understanding of what you're signing up for. And this, my mom always says the, the cheapest sometimes could be the dearest uh, to you. Yeah. Uh, and so she signed up for an insurance policy that in premiums was cheap. Um, but now, unfortunately, it's costing her uh, a, a lot of money because now she every year we get a letter in the mail saying, unfortunately, there's not enough funds to support uh, the insurance. And so you have to pay this increased amount. And if you don't, they'll cancel the policy. And now you're stuck, right? Because if, if you cancel the policy, you're, you're, you have nothing left. And she's at an age where she's not going to be able to get an, a, a, another insurance. And so if you could speak to, you probably did already, and I probably missed it at the beginning, I apologize, of the importance, of, as Avithya said, of really sitting down and understanding what is right for you so that you don't end up in that predicament. Okay, I have something to say, I don't know if you want to jump in on this. Um, here's an example we always give. Great question, Steve. Um, if we speak to somebody about something like, let's say, car insurance, we will ask them, do you pay for car insurance? Yes. How much do you pay? They usually know right off the bat. They will say, well, how much are you covered for in your car insurance? What are the exclusion liabilities? And what do you think most people say? Hmm, not really sure. Now, when is the time when they want to know? Claim time. Something happens, right? So what Steve is referring to is what's very common because we'll use that same example with life insurance. We might say to somebody, do you have life insurance? And they might say, yes. Say, how much do you pay? And they usually know. I pay 120 bucks a month, for example. Good. What type of policy do you have? I saw Dorette put in the chat here, whole life, term life, what's better? What kind of policy do you have? What are the exclusions and limitations? Sometimes something as simple as how much are you covered for? And generally speaking, we find... I'm not really sure. I just pay for it every, every month. Now, if you think about that car insurance example, the time when they want to know would be a claim time, but with life insurance, you're already gone. So to echo what Steve is asking, yes, very, very important. You need to know upfront before you sign, before you start paying, or if you are already paying, you need to know what you're paying for, how it works, not just the benefits. So a benefit might be, well, this policy will pay half a million dollars. Great. But what are the exclusions and limitations? For example, most people are not aware that policies such as whole life and universal life are considered cash value policies. Now, cash value sounds incredible. I have a cash benefit. But what Steve is doing is detailing the downside of that, which usually is not common knowledge, that to keep those premiums in force, those policies start to eat out the savings. Can you imagine going to your bank? Let's suppose you bank at ABC Bank and you check your bank account and you notice there's been unauthorized withdrawals. And your bank says, well, we need to go in, we need to borrow some money from all the accounts of all the uh, customers to keep our bank going. How outraged would you be? You say, I didn't sign up for that. This is supposed to be my money. And that's why we always say the money in those policies do not belong to you. Unfortunately, it belongs to the company. Because like Steve is saying, they, can, they take that money to pay for the policy. And once those premiums get too high and that money runs out, you, what happens is what's called a policy lapse. Okay? So very, very important. I don't want to add anything there to make sure you know up front so that you can make changes if need be. Yeah, absolutely. It's so important to... To, to get life insurance, but to know what you have when you get that life insurance and to review it regularly. I think, I think that's the important thing. And as Darren mentioned, it's not plan A. It's not if you die, it's if you die too soon. The folk, we find a lot of people buy an insurance product, but with insurance planning, it's actually planning to have money as well as your insurance, right? So that at some point you don't need the life insurance. You can't spend insurance. Right. You need money to live on. Right. And you want to leave, an, you want to leave money back for your family. If you don't have the money, you buy an immediate estate with life insurance, right? But the point is now, let me protect my, let me create this immediate estate and let me build up my assets. Let me build up myself over the next 20 years. I'm going to build up the next 30 years. So I have money and I can continue on passing on, right? So that we really emphasize net worth, having a net worth increase that you're paying down your debts. If something happened to you with or without life insurance, you have money to leave behind and no one can take away that money from you. If, if you have an insurance policy, you give up control. 
But if you invest it properly, you maintain control of your investments. So therefore, what Steve is saying is very true, no upfront. And to clearly answer Dort's question, what we always recommend and what any honest advisor would tell you, term insurance costs less. Ideally, for 99% of people, you buy a term policy, the cost is much less, but you keep your budget what's comfortable and you invest the difference. You buy term and invest the rest. That way you make sure that if you outlive that policy, you have money. If you pass away beforehand, you have insurance. That's where the planning comes into play or the program, as opposed to some advisor just trying to sell you a product for a commission. Wow, that was a power pack session. I'm going to do a quick round table to see if anyone else have any questions before we close out. Um, Steve, sounds like you've got some homework to do with your mom's um, policy there. So I'm sure Darren is Darren and Antoinette are available for, you know, a private consult. So feel free to reach out. Awesome. So um, I'm just going to quickly go around the room. Stella, any questions before we close? Yes. Um... I don't know whether mine is a question or it's just a statement. I'm sitting here and wondering uh, if you can tell from my accent, I'm from Ghana and let's say Africa. And some of these things are very difficult to discuss in those circles. Um, I'm wondering how uh, a few members of the family came into mind and I'm thinking, how do I um, talk to them about this? No, um, wanted to find out if it's do you do like um, a family session or a few group sessions so that um, such could be organized for them to know. Because when you speak of uh, pre planning and insurance, it's like, are you thinking somebody's going to die or planning poison? I don't know if you've experienced such, but uh, my question is do you have like family sessions? or a group, smaller group, especially family sessions. Yes. In both uh, Paula and yes. Erin and Antoinette. Yes. So yes, question absolutely. goes for both of them. I know Paula does as well, do one-on-one -on -one consultations. Go ahead, Paula. Yeah, we, we do have family groups, like uh, sometimes we meet with three or four families, you know, because sometimes when you're doing your final arrangements, you know, people like to prepare pre-plan for their, their children, right? So they will buy maybe about six lots, you know, like the Italians and certain um, different cultures, they buy in family plots, they buy a, a full length of family, the Muslims and they, they buy in, in, in lots too. So we also meet with all of them we meet, we could meet with a few of them and um, do the pre-planning and then they will send their brother, they send the sister, you know, everybody comes so that they will get uh, spots close to each other. That's very Thank you. important. Yeah, and we definitely do customize complimentary seatings. We meet with families. Um, we do a lot of Zoom meetings with families and groups, and it's complimentary. And then we also do a complimentary financial assessment so that everyone feels comfortable and they know what where they are and what they should do. And if they do it, it's up to them. And we encourage all in any questions. It's very transparent. Trust me, we work in our community, so we've we've dealt with everything. Every <laughs> qualm about financial planning and pre-planning, we've seen, and I know Paula and ourselves, we we know how to to address those concerns and make everyone comfortable. Yeah. yeah. You know, okay. Aviva, just, just before you you go, I just wanted to add to what Stella said, uh, um, because there's so many in the Caribbean community, and I know that you guys know this that as soon as you talk about death, the assumption is that you're going to die tomorrow. <laughs> uh, and so it's, it, they feel like it's a major jinx. And to be honest with you, this was something cultural that uh, I've heard and seen. And, and, and unbeknownst to me, all of a sudden, I adopted it. And so that's when, when I first met Paula, yeah. I didn't want anything to do with it. Uh, I didn't want to talk to her about it because I felt like, oh my, I'm staring down the barrel of my own mortality, right? But the one thing I wanted to say and emphasize one more time is this, is, and I mean this sincerely because I've shared this with a number of my friends, uh, is the relief that I have because I know that I've taken these appropriate steps. I can't, I can't begin to put it into words. The only thing I could say to my family members and friends is that I feel like a responsible adult, knowing that that stress is taken care of. Nobody has to worry about where they're going to find money for burial and all this. It's done. 
and I've told my daughter where the documents are in my house. So if something happens, this is where you go and retrieve them. So nobody is tearing up the place upside down to say, where's Steve's documents? I just feel such a relief. And so I just encourage everybody who's on, take advantage of these resources that you see in front of you. And you too will feel that sense of freedom knowing that you've taken care of these things. So thank you again. Wow, Steve, your uh, your insights are incredible. Perfect timing. And and uh, I just love the way you're explaining everything. And just, just quickly from us, when you said feel like a responsible adult, isn't that the point here? What Aletheia has put together tonight, isn't that the point? You know, if we're talking about in our own communities, oftentimes we look at other communities, let's say, with envy. Mm -hmm. we, we feel sorry for ourselves. Like, oh, poor me, poor me. Look at those type of people. You guys, everyone understands what I'm saying. We look with envy. We need to stop looking with envy and look at examples. This is what yeah. is done in financial planning. Exactly what Steve says. Be a responsible adult because it's going to affect that next generation. Sure, you might feel a little trepidation. This may, you know, we're talking about death and so forth. Imagine the devastation. You know, I, I, I'll close with it. I heard something not too long ago where they said, Imagine if God let us come back for a preview period after we pass to see the devastation we caused because we didn't plan. Imagine. Wow. So what's worse? That trepidation of, 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 of uh, you know, um, hey, I'm going to pass away if I talk about this or the reality of what's going to happen if we don't. So I think what Steve says is perfect. And I think it's just being responsible. It's just, it's just what's absolutely necessary. And I thank I Steve that. for his insights as well. Awesome, awesome. I absolutely love that. We are over time, my friends. Uh, thank you so much for coming out to share your knowledge, your expertise with us, Paula, Antoinette, Darren. This session was powerful. Um, the session is being recorded. So as soon as it's available, um, I will share it with you. And Stella, um, please share the video with your family members. I think that's a nice introduction to get yeah. them warmed yeah. up to the conversation. Right. And definitely reach out to Paula and um, Darren and Antoinette and you know, book those conversations those complimentary sessions to start yeah. the conversation and, and the planning. It is critical as, um, for our community and for us to thrive. So yeah. yes, let's take the necessary steps. So thank you so much on behalf of the entire team. Thank you for sharing with us tonight to educate and empower our community. Stay tuned for our next session on um, the first Tuesday of, um, we're already in April. So the I first know. Tuesday in May, my goodness, yeah. time yes. is flying. <laughs> And um, yeah, if you haven't already um, checked out our website, please do so. Um, subscribe to our YouTube channel. And of course, always, you know, welcome to make a purchase of our DCCBA branded gear. Of course, I'm wearing my branded gear right now, Inspire. Oh. And of course, that goes towards yeah. supporting the organization, in particular, our scholarship program, which is now open for applications. So if you know any young people in university, going to university, our scholarship program is available. So thank you, everyone. Thank you for coming out to join us. Have a great night. Stay well, stay blessed. Until next Bye. time.